Well, uh, Ilya Yashin is one of the three most important and prominent uh, Russian dissidents, a democratic politician, democratic leader. Uh, and he makes the point that when Vladimir Putin launched this invasion of Ukraine, he also introduced a law that we know about where anybody criticizing the war could go to jail for 15 years. Ilya Yashin had the choice. Uh, he could either leave the country, as most of the democratic opposition did, um, and keep speaking freely, or he could stay in Russia, speak freely, and uh, expect to be arrested. He chose the latter. He, d he decided to stay in Russia. As he said to me uh, from his jail cell, through uh, his handwritten correspondence, his lawyer conveyed my questions to him and then his handwritten answers to me later. But uh, he said he decided that he would stay in Russia. He knew his arrest would be inevitable, but that he thought it was fundamentally important, as he put it to me, that there were anti-war voices in Russia being heard from Russia, not just abroad, that he hoped that it would inspire the many millions of Russians that he assesses are also anti-war, as well as he put it, as he put it, trying to salvage his country's reputation in the world. Some people, though, trying to do that in Vladimir Putin's Russia don't last very long. Currently, the most prominent and important opposition leader, well, the, the three most prominent and important opposition leaders in Russia are all in jail. Um, Alexei Navalny is the most prominent. He was the one that Putin famously tried to murder by getting uh, agents to rub a nerve agent, Novichok, into his underpants. Uh, Putin thought apparently that this was some sort of master mind move. I mean, it would be laughable, um, you know, cartoonish villain stuff if it weren't for the fact that he is a warmonger and a mass murderer in charge of a great uh, power, or at least it was a great power until recently. So he tries uh, these covert means. Um, the, the other, the, a second of the democratic leaders under arrest in Russia, uh, Vladimir Kursa Mutsa, Kara Musa rather, he was uh, poisoned twice by Putin, but survived. Uh, so the two, two of the most, most prominent three have all been poisoned uh, by Putin, managed to survive. Um, now Ilya Yashin, the youngest of them and the most recent to be arrested, He's only 40, so he's got a long way, uh, a long future ahead of him, provided Putin doesn't succeed in murdering him. These guys are all subject to horrific treatment by the regime, but Putin pretends uh, to be above, uh, you know, gross and grubby murder, even though, of course, that's exactly what he does, and it's the risk that these guys take. Yeah. It, it, it's, I guess in many ways it's a question of weighing, weighing up how, what is the longevity of the regime that you are challenging? Um, I, I think about the Hong Kongers who are probably facing life in jail, the activists who, the democracy activists who challenged the regime in Hong Kong, um, because ultimately your voice may be silenced if you go down this path. Yes, it's a, it is a judgment call. So in the case of the Hong Kong activists, some decided to stay uh, and have been jailed. Others decided to flee and try to uh, speak against the regime and speak against Xi Jinping from countries abroad, two of them prominently from Australia. Um, I would make a distinction there between activists and leaders, um, dissidents who lead political parties or movements or, uh, ex and expect to um, one day again lead. Uh, for them, it seems to be a more common and I mean, I haven't made an exhaustive empirical study, but there are many that we can think of uh, off the top of our heads who've decided to stay uh, as political prisoners, um, martyrs or would-be martyrs, prepared to martyr themselves, to stay in repressive regimes and wait out uh, the repressive regime and then make a triumphal return to power after years in jail and, and some pretty horrible treatment. Most famous is probably Nelson Mandela in South Africa, of course, but there are, are quite a few in Asia as well. Um, there's uh, Anwar Ibrahim, the Malaysian, uh, who eventually emerged from jail to become prime minister. Uh, there's in India, uh, Nehru and Gandhi were both uh, jailed and stayed and faced the music and then eventually emerged to lead uh, an independent India. Uh, there's Aung San Suu Kyi in Myanmar, 
Um, although now, of course, she's been uh, jailed again or put under house arrest again by the regime after a triumph, triumph, a temporary triumph. And then there's Shanana Gushmau in uh, Timor-Leste, uh, who was uh, faced repression from the Indonesians and then emerged later to lead his independent and successful nation. So, you know, it, it isn't uh, it, it isn't rare. It's surprisingly common. Uh, these guys and women have all outlasted the regimes. And then there are ones famously who have left um, and uh, and have managed to 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 live and thrive and, and re return from abroad after a period in ex ex exile, the self-exile uh, or literally exiled uh, in some cases. And they include um, famous revolutionaries, Vladimir Lenin uh, in Russia, uh, Castro in Cuba, uh, Khomeini, the Ayatollah Khomeini in Iran. Uh, so some of them managed to escape and then return successfully. But then there's the great anticlimax of the exile uh, leader who left and then tried to come back, and that didn't go too well for him, and his name was Napoleon. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a while back. That was a while back, yes. An interesting one to throw into the mix. Uh, I, do you think, in a way, if you stay and you fight for your homeland, uh, as you pointed out, it gives leaders, political leaders, a moral authority once that regime falls? Yes, I, I, think, it, I think it really does. Uh, now, this is a subjective thing, just a judgment call here, but uh, to stay in your country, in your homeland, knowing that you're going to face indefinite or lifelong repression, imprisonment, um, uh, and suffer with your people, I think, does give people uh, like Ilya Yashin, like Nelson Mandela, like Anwar Ibrahim, all of whom had opportunity to leave uh, and stay abroad and yet chose to come back, or Alexei Navalny, who even after the outrageous Novichok poisoning uh, incident was safe in Germany and could have stayed abroad, these people all chose to return to certain imprisonment, suffering, and perhaps death and murder at the hands of repressive regimes in their home countries. So to, devote, to ded dedicate yourself like that, uh, to keep the spirit of resistance alive in your country uh, and suffer with your people, I, I think it does give them status and authority uh, that uh, some of the exiled leaders would have trouble uh, replicating. Yeah. Well, fascinating conversation for you to have and, and, and lucky in a way that he can still have the conversations. Good to talk, Pete. Thanks so much. Pleasure, Bert.